What's something obvious for everyone, but you only just realized? Story one. I recently discovered that honey isn't spicy. My husband was buying a bottle of hot honey, and I made some comment about the ridiculous marketing, since all honey is already spicy. Turns out I'm just allergic. Story two. I visited Rome with my mom as I was six or seven. We were staying in a line to go to the toilet in Colosseum, and she suddenly pointed to a crack in the wall and said that there is something there. I checked it out, and it was a Roman coin. Of course, I thought that it was real and kept it and told everyone I knew about it. I realized that my mom just staged it all only 10 years later. Still amazing memories, though. Story 3. For me, it wasn't until recently that I found out I'm allergic to cucumbers. I used to think the numbness they caused in my mouth was normal, similar to how peanuts affect me. It turns out I'm also allergic to peanuts, which I only learned about recently, too. Story 4. I was 42 when I had an epiphany about water towers slash tanks. They're not for storing water for an emergency. They're for storing water for water pressure. I figured it out when I wondered why the water never went off when all other utilities went out during storms. Felt pretty stupid. As one commenter said when I posted this before, they're not so towns can put their names on them as if to say, fuck you, look how much water we've got. Back in the day, some guys were flying around counting geese and ducks for a migration study. Engrossed in their task, they got lost in the days before GPS, so they buzzed a small town's water tower to read the name, then got out their map. Story 5. I had no idea that they moved the holes on a golf course. I'm 32 years old. I always thought the concept of golf was mega boring anyway, but playing the same course over and over again? Who would even bother? No one would, which is why they moved the holes. Story 6. This was from 2001. News coverage the first few days after the September 11th attacks included many mentions of box cutters. Me, box cutters, huh, what's that? This went on over and over in the news with no pictures, so I remained puzzled for days. Finally, a TV news story included a box cutter picture. Oh, it's a utility knife. I had never before heard it called anything other than a utility knife. Story 7. I like reading about history, and I read slash watch several news sources daily, so I really should have known this. I watched the series Franklin recently, and it just occurred to me why the news media is called the press. I feel like an idiot. I said something about it to my husband, and he just looked at me like, yeah, duh. Story 8. When people say we should go for a coffee sometime, it doesn't necessarily have to be coffee, so you don't have to decline because you don't like coffee. You just say yes, and then you do something else. Also, when people dim lights and put candles on, they are trying to set the mood, not save electricity. Story 9. Oh, I recently realized something that might be obvious to others, but it just clicked for me. When you say yes to one thing, you're automatically saying no to something else. For example, if you agree to help someone with their project, you're sacrificing your own time that could be spent on your tasks or just relaxing. It sounds obvious, but in the moment when someone asks you to do something, you don't always immediately consider what you're giving up in return. In short, saying yes to one thing is always saying no to another. It seems simple, but when you truly grasp it, you start looking at your decisions differently. Story 10. I just recently figured out that the little arrow next to the fuel gauge in my car actually points to the side where the gas tank is. I've been driving for years, always guessing and sometimes getting it wrong. Turns out my car's been trying to help me all along and I only just noticed. Story 11. I typically need to look up the definition of words that I thought I understood. For example, the word triage. I always thought it meant to help aid people who come into a hospital until they can be seen by a doctor slash surgeon slash etc. And I even extended it to mean when someone is really sick, isolate that person or give them a mask. I didn't know it was purely a way to categorize people to determine what order they'll be seen due to how severe their condition is. Story 12. I didn't know that pickles are cucumbers. I'm a history buff, have a master's, and when my GF said we should make our own pickles, I said, it's a little late in the summer to grow pickles. I'll never live that one down, but her reaction was priceless, and she's marriage material. Story 13. I did not know that one prong of a plug is often bigger than the other, and it correspondingly fits into a slightly bigger slot on the outlet. I've often just tried to plug something in. It didn't work. So I flipped it, and it did. So I shrugged my shoulders and went on with my day. My wife recently explained it to me a few months ago after she saw me try and fail to put a plug in with the big side on the wrong side. I'm 38 years old. Story 14. My dad spent a lot of time in the office, even during the weekends. He also went on vacation without my mom because someone had to watch over the dogs. When my mom left, he came clean about his double life, and I was shocked. My brother and sister just looked at me with that ho oh, come on dude look. I'm the eldest, and I genuinely believed he loved his job and going solo on trips. Story 15. That other languages have accents, 
It was a while ago now, but when I was learning German, a native speaker told me I had a lovely Austrian accent. And I just never realized languages other than English could have accents, but like, yeah, it's pretty obvious they would. Story 16. How people are getting jobs. I grew up in extreme poverty and no one I knew had jobs or could keep one. I didn't know how people moved up in the world. I budgeted and left teaching so I could learn and pursue a higher paying career. I'm still in that process. It's cost me a social life, but goodness gracious, did y'all know that the library has so many resources to orient you? Break the cycle. Story 17. Victorian era is, you know, when Queen Victoria was reigning. Also Georgian, but apparently that was four whole King George and a William instead of one single Victoria. And there's also Edwardian, but nobody talks about that one, probably because it was 10 years. In my defense, I'm American, and nobody really talks about Queen Victoria when talking about the Victorian era, or hasn't in front of me. Or I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. Story 18. I was in university and some friends and I were discussing childhood shows, and we were talking about Sesame Street. I suddenly had the realization that the Count isn't just called that because he's dressed like Count Dracula with the silly Transylvania accent. It's because he, you know, counts numbers. Story 19. Newly postpartum brain here, trying to eat well for my supply and myself. Chia seeds are all the rage for fiber, and I was eating yogurt with chia seeds in it last week while a commercial for chia pets showed up on my TV. 34 years old and didn't know the seeds we eat now are the seeds I grew chia pets with in the 90s. Story 20. When I was a kid, my mom would rock out in her bedroom, pacing around her bed back and forth for hours, and because I didn't know any better, thought it was perfectly normal. Realized when I got older, she only did it because she was on meth, and she stopped when she wasn't on it. Story 21. The wax that was used to seal envelopes and wine bottles is called sealing wax. I'd heard the term hundreds of times, but I never made the connection between the term and the act of sealing something. I always thought the term was sealing wax and had absolutely no idea what it was used for. Story 22. I'm attractive. I had no idea. I changed nothing about my appearance, but all of a sudden, I'm getting compliments and attention like I've never had before. I have had body image issues forever and always though I was slightly below average. Never had success on dating apps. The last year it's been crazy how many men and women who I think are completely out of my league have approached me in public. Maybe I did an ugly duckling and didn't notice. Story 23. So, I may be eight and my mom takes me to a Kmart in a rural town we're visiting to pick out school clothes. I see racks of floral shirts with shiny buttons, tight-fitting jeans, big floppy-looking hats with feathers and sparkly stuff on them, pointy-toed boots with heels. So I ask if we can look at boys' clothes instead. No, son, that's a macho cowboy look right here. Don't you want to look like a man? Story 24. I only just realized that the phrase, you can't have your cake and eat it too, actually makes sense. For years, I thought it was just nonsense. Like, why wouldn't you eat the cake if you have it? But it finally clicked that it means you can't eat the cake and still have it in front of you. It's either one or the other. I felt both embarrassed and enlightened at the same time. Story 25. Whenever I would fill out some applications for anything that have the highest level of education question, I never realized that some college meant some college. I thought it was referring to some as a nobody community college. I was always confused on why there was never an option for currently in college. Maybe I should drop out. Story 26. It took me till I was 18 it realized that when people said they were procrastinating because of laziness, they meant that they could have done it at any time, but just don't feel like. And not that they were constantly stressing about having to do that thing, knowing you have to do it, but your body physically not letting you, despite you screaming at your body and brain, to just fucking move and do the work. ADHD is hell, and that was after having had the diagnosis for eight years. Story 27. Nobody really has any clue what they're doing. Planning your future always has variables that can set you on a completely different course. Advice from people who are more experienced doesn't really matter for shit because you work differently from them. Your job training doesn't really train you to do your job the way you actually do it. Your life is basically one big, let's try this and see if it works. Story 28, that Dosa Keys literally means two X's. The emblem is even XXX. I heard the name for years, even had a few. In my defense, I don't speak Spanish and I'm always drinking when they are around. It was an embarrassing WTF moment when it dawned on me. Story 29. It's funny how some things only hit you after a while. For example, I recently had a moment where it clicked that goodbye is a contraction of God be with you. It's something that's kind of obvious when you think about it, but it's one of those details that can easily slip past without much thought. Do you have any similar realizations that surprised you? Story 30. 
I thought I was okay with being single because I'm kind of an inconsiderate ass. But being alone is lonely, and everyone my age is married or has kids, and I just want someone to go to Renfest with, and it doesn't even need to be romantic, just like someone to talk to. Story 31. A big realization for me was the role greed plays in American culture. We sort of spin it as independence, self-reliance, etc., but really we just aren't great at thinking communally. The more you learn about business and capitalism, the more you realize most things are the way they are because someone stands to profit from it being that way, and they will fight tooth and nail to keep it. I used to be so confused about why people got older and almost universally became more conservative, more xenophobic, more bigoted. And it's just because they finally got their hands on some money and said, fuck all that hippie shit I was into when I was poor. Nobody's taking a single cent from me or changing my lifestyle in any way. Story 32. I thought chia seeds were extremely spicy. Couldn't really work out why people were eating spicy chocolate chia pudding for breakfast. I just assumed they were supposed to be spicy for years. It finally clicked one day when my nurse partner went, you realize they aren't spicy and you're just allergic, right? Story 33. This was a long time ago, but the first time I got my eyes checked, I was in first or second grade or something. The optometrist told my mom I'm almost completely blind in one eye. She looks at me and asks why I wouldn't say anything. I said I thought everyone only had one working eye. Story 34. I recently had the realization that the reason we say thank you is to express gratitude, not just to acknowledge it. For years, I saw it as a mere formality. But I now understand it's a way to genuinely connect and appreciate others' efforts. It's such a small change in perspective, but it's made me more mindful of how I communicate my gratitude. Story 35. I was about 40, and I had never heard the phrase camel toe. My friend made a comment about this girl in a show we were watching, and when he mentioned it, I said, What's wrong with her toes? They look normal. He spit out his drink as he broke into a long laugh. Story 36. Sun-kissed orange juice. I didn't realize that sun kiss meant kissed by the sun, or that Ocean Spray brand juices were meant to signify refreshing, like an ocean spray. The nuance of advertising was wasted on me with those two. Once I realized I was missing things, I literally went through my refrigerator looking at labels to see if I had missed anything else. Story 37. It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out what your eyes are bigger than your stomach meant. Also, whenever I heard a woman called a butterface, I always thought it meant she looked greasy or chubby, like Butterball. And then it finally clicked one day. Story 38. I always thought M in all the James Bond movies stood for mom. It's been mostly Judy Dench in all the ones that came out since I've been alive. Bond would call her mom. I was like 29 before I figured out that it was ma'am with a British accent. Story 39. The rise of the information age has proven to me that the historical lack of easy access to knowledge is not what has slowed down human progress. People would rather burn books than learn something outside their worldview. The unwashed masses prefer a dark age to an age of enlightenment. Story 40. That the meat baloney is spelt bulgana. Leaned late into my second year working for a grocery store meat department. Everyone just thought I was making a lame joke or something by saying it wrong. A crustless quiche is called a frittata, not frittata. With wildly unfounded confidence, I once corrected my restaurant chef in his pronunciation during a pre-shift meeting. He just shook his head in disbelief and walked away that my heart wasn't having just minor palpitations randomly, and that I was not as immune to this thing called heartburn as I had always thought. I just didn't know the word to describe that burning, kind of uncomfortable feeling I sometimes felt after eating specific foods. It was, in fact, just regular heartburn. Now I know the value of Tums. Story 41. This is one that I actually grew out of in high school, but I thought that the word approximate meant precisely or exacty. It just sounds like such an exacting word. And if you give the precise answer for something every time someone tells you to approximate something, they'll just think you did an extra good job so no one will correct you. Story 42. That the company that employs you makes a profit from your labor. I had to hire a subcontractor once and I paid them the same amount that I'm paid. A bunch of people told me I should have paid something like 10 to 20% less than I'm paid. I knew that companies marked up the price of products, but it never occurred to me that they also mark up the price of labor. Story 43. It's always fascinating how simple realizations can change our perspective. For me, it was understanding how essential the little everyday habits are for overall happiness. Things like regular exercise, a balanced diet, and even just maintaining a good sleep routine make such a big difference. I always knew they were important, but only recently did it hit me just how much they impact my overall well-being. Story 44. 
When I first came to the U.S., I was very surprised to hear little kids talk little kids' English. I guess I had believed that Americans all learned English in high school like I had, and that all Americans were just really good at it after studying really hard. Story 45. The fact that the schools all lied to us. Percentages are super easy to figure out because they're reversible. X. 20% of 80 is the same as 80% of 20. One is easier to figure out. This is a super basic example, but it works on all percentage questions. You might not get the exact answer, but close enough to get it right on a multiple choice test. I just found this out in the past few months and I graduated from college a year ago. Story 46. My dad was 50 when he realized that sea glass wasn't a living creature. We realized his stupidity when he said, wow, they look just like real glass. Nature is so beautiful. We were like, what the fuck do you mean? He thought it was a living animal of some sort that just happens to look and feel like glass. We were big shellers at the time, so he was very familiar with the beach. There's really no explanation for this one. Story 47. This isn't about me, but my best friend. When she was a kid, she accidentally cut a worm in half. She was devastated and went to her dad in tears. He comforted her by saying it was okay because now there were two worms and they'd be best friends forever. Fast forward to when she was 26 and taking a course. Her teacher, for some reason, mentioned that a worm cut in half actually dies. That moment shattered her sweet and innocent childhood belief. Story 48. After visiting the elk and bison prairie at land between the lakes in Kentucky, my father-in-law. Did you get to hear the bugling? Me. There were only elk and bison on the tour. I didn't see any buglers, but that would have been cool too. He didn't even laugh. He just smiled and nodded. My husband waited until we left to tell me. Story 49. I was chatting with a friend about a tech issue, tossing around jargon like RAM and SSD as if everyone understood. Midway through, I noticed their blank stare. That's when it hit me. While these terms are second nature to me, they might be totally foreign to someone else. It was a light bulb moment, realizing that what's obvious to me isn't always clear to others.